My most recent project has been a desktop optical computed tomography system, or CT system. Most people think of CT scanning for medical imaging of people. The technique enables clinicians to see the anatomy of cross sections of the body without having to do any surgery. CT scanners for imaging of patients requires x-rays, which are dangerous to handle on your own, but you can build a CT scanner using visible light and a camera. Shown here is the CT, optical CT scanner that I built. There's a DSLR on the left, and there's an LED array on the right, and the object is placed in this light tight box. I'll go over how the system works in just a moment. The only catch for optical CT imaging, as opposed to CT imaging that you would see in a hospital, is that you have to image semi-transparent objects that the light can penetrate through such as uh, fruits or tissue paper or gummy bears. When I started this project, I realized about halfway through that a lot of the hardware for the scanner is similar to what you need for doing 3T imaging based on photogrammetry. So I upgraded the system to do either CT scanning of transparent objects or 3D surface profiling of most small objects using the same scanner. In this video, I'm going to go over the basics of CT scanning, the construction of the system, how to operate the system, and some of the results. For full description of the build, check out the Instructable. There's a link in the description below. Shown here is a figure of a basic CT scanner. There's a source of x-rays, the object, which in this case is just a cylinder, and then an x-ray detector on the right here. A single image that's collected with this system is just an x-ray, which is like a shadow. It has all the 3D information projected into a single 2D image. A CT scan requires acquiring x-rays from many different angles. So in most CT scanners, what's done is the x-ray source and detector rotate about the object. This figure here is a CT scanner, a cartoon of a CT scanner that you may be more familiar with. We have the patient that's lying on some table and then the CT scanner, which consists of the x-ray source and the detector which would be underneath. The patient is slid into the scanner at the section that needs to be imaged and then the x-ray and the x-ray source and detector are rotated about the person. If a full body scan is going to be acquired, then the person is, scan, uh, is, is moved through uh, the, the, uh, the scanner. And shown over here is just a top-down look at a CT scanner. Again, the source is shown right here, and then a projection, or the detector is shown over here. And uh, this in the middle is the object. Now, depending on the absorption the absorption of x-rays in the object, fewer or more x-rays reach the detector over here. So the projection shows how many x-rays have actually made it through the object. So this is just at a single angle. What's done in the CT scan is that these projections are made over a series of angles. And what's formed is what's called a sinogram, which is a picture that's shown right over here. One of these columns is a projection from just a single angle, and the full image shows how the projection changes as the, as the object is rotated through the scanner. With this data, a cross-section of the object can be formed by using a mathematical operation called the inverse radon transform. And incredibly, after applying this transform, a cross-section of the object is recovered. So shown here is the cross-section. Uh, this is of the chest, and we're looking at the lungs right here. For an optical CT scanner, visible light and a camera are used instead of x-rays. At the top, I have a cartoon of the CT scanner with the x-ray source and the x-ray detector, and the x-rays going through the object. Below is an optical CT scanner. The source of radiation which is an LED array, so this is radiation that's not harmful to in, in long exposures. 
and an object, which must be semi-transparent because the light needs to be able to travel through it. And then the detector is a camera with a telecentric lens. The telecentric lens is used because you need the light rays collected to be parallel through the object. And here's the schematic of the optical CT system that I built. There's a Nikon D5000 for acquiring images that is triggered using a shutter remote connected to an Arduino. The object is rotated using a stepper motor which is controlled with an H bridge that's connected to the Arduino. The light supply is this LED array that I bought from Home Depot and there's a diffuser for the light source in front of the LEDs. For photogrammetry, which is the most popular technique used for 3D scanning objects that's become pretty popular in the last five years or so, the object must be illuminated from the front. So I also have included this LED, LED array at the front of the, the camera and that's controlled with the Arduino. The system is controlled using a few push buttons and potentiometers that set the exposure time, the number of photos that are collected, and uh, the push buttons are used to control when the acquisition is started or if the system is to be resetted. All the information is then displayed with an LCD screen that's also connected to the Arduino Nano. To house the electronics in the sample, I designed a mount for the camera and a light type box in Fusion 360, which is shown right here. PVC joints are used to connect dowel rods together that attach to this light type box right over here. The camera mount was inspired by DIY Steadicams that are also built out of PVC. The box is made out of plywood and houses all the electronics in the sample. There were also several custom adapters that I designed. I have a mount for the stepper motor, which is shown right here. I had a few mounts or, or stages for the samples. This one, uh, a, a nail sticks through, so this is good for piercing transparent objects for the CT scanner. Here's another stage that attaches to the shaft of the motor and an object is placed on this side of it. I have these little mounts for connecting the LED array from Home Depot to the light type box. This was for connecting the dowel rods to the box. And this is a handle for the top of the lid. And finally, one last thing. Uh, this is the just a, a little mount for attaching uh, the prototype board to the light type box. After painting all the PVC joints and making the camera mount jig with the screw and a spring, all the dowel rods were put together. They were really tight though, so I actually had to sand down the dowel rods quite a bit in order for them to fit into the PVC pipe. Uh, and this is just a little stop motion that I made so you can see how the design looks like. Next, I built up the box using plywood and 1x2 planks. The sides were nailed into the planks and holes were cut for the camera, LED array, and front panel. I ran some preliminary tests for triggering the camera and using a stepper motor because it's the first time that I've used them. Then I soldered the electronics on a prototype board and checked if the motor was still working. I wanted to try something new with the front panel so I tried printing the panel design onto a sheet of aluminum. I followed a video, which is listed in the description, that explained how to do this using an iron. After soaking in water, the panel design is printed onto the aluminum. It worked pretty well after trying just a few times. I drilled out holes with a drill press or Dremel and then placed the switches, LCD screen, and potentiometers onto the panel. After attaching the panel to the box, I soldered the rest of the connections. The motor and motor mount were attached to the box using a drill. Finally, black poster board was placed over the walls and the addressable LEDs were placed in the front of the box for the 3D surface profile scans. 
All right, now I'm going to show how a typical scan is acquired with the system. First, I'm going to reset the system by hitting the reset button here. Uh, there's a flash of blue with the LED and the camera will go off to indicate that the program has been, the system has been restarted. Then using this knob to the right here, I can switch between a CT scan or uh, a 3D surface profile scan. And remember the only difference is from what side the illumination comes from, whether the object is illuminated from the back or from the front. So once I've picked the type of scan, I'm just gonna pick a 3D surface profile scan now. I hit the enter button and there's a green light indicating that the, the mode has been correctly set. And then using the knob on the left here, I choose how many images I would like to acquire for the scan. And once I select that, I click the enter button and the system will start acquiring images. So that you'll hear the DSLR shoot a photo and the motor rotates the object. The LEDs flash on and off just so just to lower the power consumption of the system. All right, now I'm going to open up the top and show you what's going on inside. We're now looking down onto the system. I'm going to remove the lid. And here's the inside of the scanner. I have the sample right here. It's this weird orange rabbit from a Kinder Egg. And it's positioned on the stage that's attached to the motor. So as the, the photos are taken, the object is rotated using the stepper motor down here. It's kind of hard to see, but it's underneath the stage. Right now I have the illumination on at the front. If there's going to be a CT scan, you need to switch the illumin on, illumination on from the back here. So there's just the switch. And then the addressable LEDs that provide the illumination from the front is turned off during the CT scan. To the left here, or to the bottom of the screen here, you see a cable that's running out to the DSLR. This is what's controlling the shutter and the focus of the camera. So this is how the, the system is controlled with the Arduino, sorry, the camera's controlled with the Arduino. Well, I'm going to hit the restart button again. We're doing a, a 3D profile scan, so that light in the back gets turned off. And now that I restart it, you see the blue light flash indicating that it's been started. Uh, I'm again going to select a 3D scan by clicking enter. And we're going to acquire 50 images, so I'll hit enter again. So now the illumination turns on when the camera is exposed, when the sensor is being exposed by the camera, and you can see the motor rotate between each image. So this continues until all the images are collected. Then the images need to be taken on off the SD card onto a computer to do the reconstruction using either MATLAB or PhotoScan or some other 3D reconstruction program. Here are images of a tomato slice acquired from the CT mode of the scanner. Using MATLAB, the images are reshaped to form sinograms. As this video is playing, you are watching the sinograms at different rows in the image. Then, using the inverse radon transform, a 3D model of the tomato can be constructed. In this rendering, you could see the seeds embedded in the tomato and the nail going through it. For objects that are not transparent, like this ring, a 3D model can be generated with the scanner by illuminating the object from the front. I then used PhotoScan to create the surface profiles. The images are cropped and points are identified for the surface profile. You can see the camera positions predicted by the software by these blue uh, rectangles here, which should be in a perfect circle around the object. A sparse point cloud is created first, followed by a dense cloud, a mesh, and then finally a texture. I tried scanning lots of objects, like this potentiometer. Here's the sparse point cloud, the dense point cloud, and the texture. I also tried this flower and got a pretty decent model too. Overall I've been happy with the results from the scanner. 
Photoscan is impressive software that does most of the work for creating incredible 3D models. I have some gaps in the photogrammetry results due to the camera being only at one elevation. For CT scanning, there were much fewer objects to scan, but I was still happy everything worked. Because I wrote the code, I feel I have a much better idea what is happening with the reconstruction. And that's the project. Thanks for watching the video. All relevant links should be listed in the description. And make sure to check out the Instructable for more details.